Hi friends, David here from Above AVL and Learn Christmas Lighting. And in this video, we're gonna talk about getting started first steps in FPP. So if you're not familiar, FPP stands for the Falcon Player, um, runs on Raspberry Pi microcomputers, runs on these BeagleBone microcomputers, powers uh, controllers, including the Culp ones, the Wally's Lights ones, and others. And what it is, is it is a show player that I would argue most people probably doing pixel animated light shows are using, um, though not all. And it allows you to play back your music with your sequences. Um, you can technically also play video with it um, as well and keep everything scheduled in sync and happy. And so in this video, we're gonna walk through the basics from installation. So to install FPP, first thing, there's gonna be a couple ways you can do it. Kind of the easiest, laziest way is to grab this Raspberry Pi imager from the raspberrypi.com. Okay, so I just grabbed that, okay? And so you can grab yours, like I've got a four here. And then in the operating systems, there is actually, uh, FPP is in here somewhere. Other specific, that's the one, other specific OSs. Um, and they've got 9.1 on here from 818, which is not bad. So historically, I've always looked at this, and if you go, you Google, just web search FPP download, you'll get to this page, the releases page on GitHub, okay? And 9.1 is the latest, and then it has you, there's basically a section here called assets, and then if you're on a BeagleBone, you download, um, it tells you, hey, for, for these devices, download this one, right? Uh, for Raspberry Pi, download this one. So you would download that file, okay? Use a program called Balina Etcher is the best one. You download this program and you essentially, it literally looks like this. You grab the file, you select your drive and you hit the button. This is a little bit simpler just because it's all right here in this app, okay? And it downloads it and everything is part of the process. So I'm gonna grab 9.1, the latest version, of course, if it's kind of pre-season early on, you can grab the latest version, sure. If you're kind of already into the season, you know, maybe you want to grab a version that you have on another controller that's working great. Sometimes there's bugs and they can cause issues. Um, then grab your micro SD card usually, which you're gonna install it on. I just pop mine into the computer. There it is. Hit next. It's gonna tell you about wiping your drive, so make sure you selected the right one. And then go make a cup of coffee. Come on back, it's gonna be done in just a few minutes, okay? So it's gonna download it, it's gonna install it, and you're gonna be good to go. Again, with the Bellina Etcher you know, process, very similar, very uh, simple, and you should be good to go there. So we're gonna take a quick coffee break, pop on back when this finishes, and show you the first steps in the FPP interface, how to get started. And then we see the success message, and we're done. So that was simple. So go ahead and get rid of that. I'm gonna pop over to X lights because now what we're gonna do is grab our SD card out of the computer. Um, if you ever have issues writing to SD cards, writing FPP, whatever, um, the, well, it's a couple things. One is you used to have to do this, pull the SD card out, stick it in the computer, you know, write it every time you want to update FPP. Now that's all built in. You know, as long as you have an internet connection, you can update just within the software generally. So we're gonna go ahead and stick that into our Raspberry Pi. Whoop. Pop that guy in there. Some SD card clips have a springy bit. This one doesn't seem to have a springy bit or it's broken, which is weird. So we should be good there. And then we're gonna take this guy, plug it in, and I'm going to go ahead and just plug it into my home network for, for basic configuration, okay? You can also not plug it into a network and it should generate a Wi-Fi network called FPP with the password Christmas with a capital C. But in this case, I'm just gonna plug it into my home network. It will, through DHCP, find this device. It'll go on the network and then we can begin working with it. All right, so we get it plugged in. It's booting up, it takes a minute. But once it boots up, we should simply be able to just go with our controller, whether standalone Pi, go to tools, FPP connect, and it should go out and be able to find it. There also is a sweet FPP app for Android, at least probably iOS too, that um, allows you to find them. So I'm just literally gonna keep hitting this button until it shows up. And then in a minute, yep, see, we've got one showing up here. It's a player, it's version 9.1. 
So I'm just gonna click here on this IP address. It's gonna take me over to the web browser. And then there's a few steps for setup just to walk you through. This has been the same for a while. It's pretty simple, but don't want anything to confuse you. So you have a UI password that's to get into this web page. So I usually set that to none because I don't have random people on my network who are gonna hack with it. Well, ooh. My kid is getting savvy. Um, <laughs> OS password, usually just leave it at the default. Um, you shouldn't need that for anything. Give it a name, okay? Um, and so you can, you can change that host name if you want. We'll just go ahead. If there's any output hardware on it that it hasn't found, you can put that there. Then I like to go ahead and say, look up location, look up time zone. So it's gonna set all of that stuff for you um, on the device itself. Okay, finish setup. And then it's going to nag you about rebooting like this whole time, but just make sure you do everything you want to do before you do that. Okay, so change any configuration stuff you need to do, and then you can go ahead and reboot. And in a minute, it'll come back. You do have to wait for this little tag to show up before it actually reboots, um, pro tip there. And then, you know, I'm trying to find it here. It's not finding it. And so we'll wait about 30 seconds to a minute and it should be right back. We can do our basic setup. Okay, so I'm not getting, even gonna wait for that. Um, so on the x -Lite side, here we are in FPP, and we're gonna check this box that says upload, okay? And then we're going to go ahead, and it thinks it has something connected, but it doesn't. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead now and choose a sequence, okay, from x -Lites. all right. And it should have media. For some reason, this first one doesn't have media. I'm gonna see what my son did. So we're gonna grab our most recent modified sequence that has an MP3. And then all we have to do to get it in there and to get working with it in our FPP device is we have to hit upload. So make sure it's back, hit upload. We see success. Oop, we don't see success. Um, and so that is probably because it's not configured to be feeding any controllers right now, but it does have all UDP out selected, so we should be good to go there. And then, you know, we could do more, et cetera, but this is a good place to start. So yeah, now it's giving me this, this red deal here because it's trying to see controllers that doesn't see them. Let's walk through the next couple basic first steps of FPP. Um, so if you wanna play something, um, it should be in here. I now have this sequence, oops, forgot to do the media, so we'll just hit it again, boom. So now we've loaded that, we've loaded the media, I'm even gonna close x lights because we don't need it anymore. And now I'm able to go ahead and play the sequence, okay, and it's now playing that, and it's also playing the MP3, which is cool. Okay, so we'd see that happening on our lights if we had an audio device plugged in, we would see that happening. But let's go ahead and set up a schedule. So it says, for example, no playlist scheduled and one of the most basic things you're gonna do in x -Lights is set up schedules. So we'll go here to content setup and scheduler, press add, and oops, I did this in the wrong order. Sorry, content setup and then playlist. I always do it in the wrong order. New playlists. So for example, I'm just gonna call this test. And now all I have to do is just add sequences. So by default, we're typically into sequence and media. We're gonna choose that sequence and that media. If they're named the same, excuse me, if they're named the same, they will match automatically. Video out, you can set. If it has video outputs and press add. Perfect. Rinse and repeat as many times as you've got them. You can drag them around here and change the order. Hit save. Content setup scheduler. Now we get to schedule. So a schedule is gonna be anything in x -Lights where you want a playlist or even a single sequence to play back, okay? Um, so typically start a show, end of show. Um, if you have different days of the week where you have different timings as to when it runs, for example, um, we run ours later on weekends, this is where you do that. So we'll go ahead and just set up a basic sequence. Schedule, sorry. So we're gonna, I'll do two at once, why not? So say I have, you know, going from 9-8 to 12-31 on 
2030. Um, so say I want it to just run forever. Um, but then I need a day filter. So I could do every day. I could do weekdays, stuff like that. Or I can do day mask. Okay. So say, for example, weekends run longer than weekdays. So then we set start time and end time. It's worth noting, too, you can set it to start at dusk if you want. That's handy. Um, that's going to base off of the... Uh, the whatchamacallit, the, the calendar that tells you when about the rise and fall of the sun should be. It's got a name. And then default is going to be playlist. So I'm just going to bring in my playlist here. Um, so they're starting, they're both starting at, oops, 5 p.m. End time. So weekdays will end at 9 p.m. Go to bed, kids. 10 p.m. on weekends. And then for the modes, um, generally leaving it as graceful stop and repeat as immediate is what you want. Okay, graceful stop is gonna finish the song and then stop. If you're in a place where you're like, no, 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 like 9 p.m. hits, it has to stop. I don't care if it's the middle song, I don't care about that, blah, blah, blah. Then you do um, hard stop. Graceful loop, I believe, finishes out the playlist, but honestly, that's new and I've never touched it. So press, press save. And then what you're gonna see, if we go back to the home screen right here, is we should see a next playlist notification here that tells you the next time the playlist is gonna play and hopefully it's correct. And if it is, then you're good to go ready to rock and roll. And hey, you've learned the basics of FPP here. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? You can get started with this stuff. Um, if you're brand new to this and you're getting into the season and you're like, this is harder than I thought it was gonna be, then you definitely need our support. So inside of the Learn Christmas Lightning Academy, we have the A to Z guide step-by-step -step of how to do this stuff, how to make an animated light show and how to make it rock. Then we've got our experts, mostly myself, in our forums there to help you in crunch time as you need that help, okay? Um, we're here to help you and we love to serve. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.